Hi, I'm Susan Winter for SusanWinter.net. I want to talk about a situation that is incredibly confusing. The person that you know is attracted to you that does everything in their power to hide that, to deflect any kind of evidence that they are indeed attracted to you. Now, this would be piggybacked on the absolute knowledge that you sense deep within yourself that unbelievable marker of mutual attraction. We know what that is. It doesn't happen every day. And because it falls outside the norm of our day-to-day -day activities, we can't help but acknowledge it. it. It's a real thing. So when you feel this unbelievable mutual attraction, you may indeed meet a partner that confuses you. You see, experiences that are outside the norm catalyze emotional reaction that is also outside the norm. For example, given your disposition, I'm fairly open and honest in general, right? So when I meet somebody and I have that really potent, unbelievable, delicious feeling, my normal default is to the far end over here of obvious excitement. I I have rapid conversation. I can't seem to get a hold of what I'm thinking. Uh, a normally articulate Susan can be jumping from conversational topic to the other. And I'm basically uh, the golden retriever puppy wagging its tail. I can't hide my affection or my interest or my intrigue, which, you know, if anything, if I had to default to something, I'd rather it be that because it's honest. And that way, the person that I'm engaged with is very clear that, yes, I like you too. But at the far end of that response is another response that is a very common human response, which is to not reveal their hand, not show you how much they care. It is um, a need to control, a need to feel empowered. Maybe they fear vulnerability. Oh, they might know I like them. Meanwhile, the human animal is reading it 100%. And so this is confusing. What do we do? How do we deconstruct this? How do we handle it? Um, having been there before, I can tell you the way that I found around it. First of all, it is the first hurdle that you have to get over if you meet this kind of resistance from the other partner. You have to understand that they are incredibly uncomfortable. And so because it takes one person moving forward to create the comfort, however, you may find that one-on-one -on -one basic interaction, hi, how are you, my name is, that they will walk away, ignore you, uh, maybe say something defensive, kind of a quip, uh, a snappy comment. Uh, it can be very confusing. Why is the person that I know is obviously attracted to me acting kind of mean to me or dismissive? Again, that's a cover. That's a cover for their interest. But in order to get them to relax, you may want to try and engage in one-on-one -on -one conversation and find that it's somewhat futile because to them, the spotlight is on them. And the spotlight of your awareness of what is this feeling between the two of you makes them uncomfortable. So our normal, hi, how are you, what do you do, that may not go well. In scrambling to find my own answer for this, I remembered meeting a guy and it was so powerful. It was like electricity. And whenever we were near each other at this party, he would kind of give me non-answers or look bored. And I thought, okay, this is ridiculous. The first tier I had to get over was, am I crazy? Am I delusional? Well, I had to ask myself, you know, you are a rational person, you are not prone to delusion, and the other truth that I know is that this kind of attraction does not occur in a vacuum. So trust yourself. If you are not prone to delusion and you're feeling this, it's a real thing, okay? So ground yourself, and even though they are acting the opposite, they are also being affected. Remember, they're at the far end of the spectrum of how they respond to it. So I decided one-on-one -on -one is a little too intense. And I'm going through the Rolodex in my mind of what could be the possible thing to ease this guy's tension. And I sidled up next to him, and I think I started 
talking about something observational, meaning not one-on-one, -on -one, not about him, not about me, not about us. I started noting people that were dancing. I think I talked about something with the decor. It didn't even need a response. It was more like me talking to myself. And little by little, he, you know, a couple statements. And then I continued on this track of this removed, observational, outside of talking to you specifically, I'm just yakking. And don't you know, the conversation began to flow. Of course, we got together, and of course, we were together for quite some time. So I asked him at one point, I said, hey, by the way, when we first met, why were you such a dick? I mean, you were really giving me a hard time. And he said, Susan, I was kind of paralyzed. He said, I didn't know what to do. And I suppose the extreme version of him being aloof would be the person who is so dismantled by their feelings of attraction that they go completely mute. I have seen that as well. So let us assume that you find yourself in this intense mutual attraction and you have attracted the person who is shut down. If you are the person who is more comfortable and more open, I suggest removing the situation from one-on-one -on -one to an observational attention off the person. If you're at a party and the host says, hey, can you round up the bottles or can you check the fire? Just tell this person, I, I need you to help me. They want us to do this. Get involved in some other activity that takes their self-consciousness away from them and focuses their attention on something external. And you should indeed find yourself able to eventually have this connection. Understand we all have our own coping mechanisms. And again, unless you are prone to delusion by nature, this kind of awareness cannot occur within a vacuum. So trust yourself. And by the way, I have counseled a lot of people who are more in my position, dealing with somebody who is reluctant. There's only one combination that doesn't work. And it's very unfortunate. Um, if you are the person who is prone to deflect and you meet and know somebody that there is incredible attraction to, if you are both deflecting, if you are both negating what's there, if you are both too uncomfortable for anyone to step forward and be, you know, the golden retriever puppy wagging its tail, your relationship cannot start. And it is incredibly difficult for me. I had a client that was in this situation. I could not get her to overcome her fear of showing up. You know, this bluster of confidence isn't confidence at all. It's guard. All it takes is one person to step forward and be empowered enough to say, I like you. It's not hard. And sometimes something as simple as that can dismantle the fear and the guard of another human being. I hope this has eased a concern that I hear about. Why do they act like they like me and then they don't like me, but they're attracted to me and they kind of pull away. Yes, this is what this is. Try to move it from one-on-one -on -one to the observational. Give them a little space. I hope this helps you. Susan Winter for SusanWinter.net. Thanks a lot.